starting off here with six peppers and I'm gonna have each one of them. And I'm going to take the seeds and the white lines out of them. What that's gonna do is kind of make a vessel. And uh, remember to rinse off your vegetables before, I forgot to mention that, rinse off your vegetables before you start using them to cook. But the end result's gonna look like this, without any seeds or white lines in them. We're good to go. So I'm gonna do that for all of the other peppers and we're gonna go from there. So my late mother taught me how to make stuffed bell peppers and she wasn't really worried about the healthy side of it. I'm teaching you the healthy way of cooking them. So, you know, I have these he these halved bell peppers here. Um, these halved bell peppers are clean, no seeds. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to steam them instead of smothering them in grease and water. So. Um, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm, I have this rice cooker here with the steamer attachment and I'm going to put the bell peppers in there face down. And this may take more than one go around here. So I'm gonna to try to fit six of them in this one and then do another six. So anyway, stay tuned. All right, as I'm finishing up, steaming these peppers here. I failed to mention the reason why you steam them. Well, if you've ever had stuffed bell peppers before, if, if you don't cook them to soften them up before putting them in the oven with stuffing, well, they're going to be, I probably just steamed up the camera lens, my apologies, but they're going to be a little bit hard, tough. So I like to just kind of soften them up a little bit. So what I did was I put them in this Pyrex here and we're gonna continue on with the next step. So now that the bell peppers are steamed, I'm gonna work on the stuffing for the bell peppers. And what I have here is two pounds of boneless skinless chicken breast. And I have a pound of ground turkey. It's 93.7, uh, you can get the 99.1, uh, but this is lean enough to work with here. So have that here. I'm going to open that one up. I'm going to dump that into the bowl, the mixing bowl. Now what I'm going to do with the chicken is, so when you buy boneless skinless chicken breast, it's going to have fat on it and it's going to have a tendon. Some people leave those things in it, but um, I don't really like it, so I'm going to trim that off. So what I'm doing is cutting all the fat that I can see on here and I'm going to cube it up. The reason why I'm cubing it up is because I'm gonna ground this chicken. So you can buy chicken that's already ground. Um, you know, having a two to one mix of turkey and chicken is uh, it's a good mix. and. Um, the texture and the flavor is pretty good. So that's why I do that. Um, reason why I don't have, or I didn't buy ground chicken is because I have a bunch of boneless, skinless chicken breast. And as you know, if you dieting and you're eating chicken and rice, chicken and rice, chicken and rice, and chicken and broccoli, chicken and broccoli all the time, well, you can not really get away from the, the taste part. Now you can flavor things up, you can spice it up, but the texture of just eating chicken breast, uh, you know, that can get kind of old. So grounding it up might change that up a little bit. And that's what I'm gonna use in the stuffing for the bell peppers. So stay tuned and we're gonna go to the next step. Okay, so what I have here is this meat grinder attachment for my mixer. And it works pretty well. Now again, this is not a necessary step. You can go to the grocery store and buy ground chicken breast and uh, you know, it's pretty easy, but, um, or you can just do all turkey um, if that's what you prefer. Um, I like the flavor and the texture of mixing turkey and chicken. Uh, it makes really good uh, stuffed peppers and you can kind of work with it with spices and uh, seasoning. So what I'm gonna do is turn this on and I'm gonna get, get rolling on this. And we're going to get some brown chicken. I'm 
know this is not the most appealing look, but this is what your butcher does. Just gonna kind of stuff this down. There we go. Ooh. It's actually pretty fun. These attachments work really well if you find like lean steak on sale. And you know, right now, prices of meat are kind of horrendous. So, um, hope you can kind of hear, hope you can hear me now, but um, you know, this is really good if you want to make round meat. Um, really good for wild game too if you're into that but i'm gonna let this finish up here and we're gonna go continue to the next step. all right y'all you're gonna have to excuse my amateur photography skills here but i have this magna light pot and it's under you know medium to high heat and i'm going to put a touch of olive oil in it notice how i didn't really measure that um what that's gonna do is Grease the pot up a little bit. And right here I have an onion diced along with the gypsy pepper. It's a sweet pepper. You can use a jalapeno pepper if you want, if you want spice. I like spice, spicy food to be honest, but you know, uh, my wife doesn't necessarily like it. I also have two cloves of garlic here that are minced and I'm going to pour that, dump that in. All right, so now that the vegetables are sweating in the background, you can hear them in the pot going, what I'm gonna do is prepare the meat. Now, look, since this is a combination of two very lean meats, it's not gonna be as savory. So what you're gonna have to do is simulate that savory uh, ground beef type flavor and texture. So what I'm going to do is add a variety of spices. Now, look, I understand with availability of uh, of seasoning where you are you know you may have to just kind of come up with your own concoction but this is what I usually do I'm gonna start off with and this is a staple here this is adobo really good seasoning here and look I'm not measuring here I just kind of go by feel and you know you cook this enough and you'll go by feel to also have Italian seasoning here Italian seasoning is uh, it's got thyme rosemary um, sage oregano and basil in it and uh, I'm gonna put some of that in there too because this is, a, after all, an Italian dish, believe it or not. I have a staple of every Cajun household here, and that's Tony Sashery's Creole seasoning. Um, you know, you can use any type of Cajun seasoning. What I'm going to do is put some of that in there. Look, it's going to add spice, and my wife may complain, but oh well. It's going to be really good. This is something here. It's a <clears throat> SPG or salt, pepper, and garlic. I'm gonna put some of that in there. So it's good to have that black pepper uh, flavor in there. You can kind of have a subtle hint of that black pepper. So I'm gonna put that in there. I have some uh, roast chicken seasoning. It's kind of like a, a chicken base seasoning, almost like a, you know, a, a bouillon type. And it's got some garlic and herb spices in it. Put some of that in there. And the last thing to simulate that kind of savory uh, flavor. This is a roasted garlic brown butter seasoning. Um, it's really good. That butter flavor in there is going to give you that type of butter flavor, uh, that savory butter flavor without the calories, without the fat of the butter. So I'm gonna put that in there. And remember we have three pounds so you can apply liberally, get that flavor going. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a little bit more Tony's in there. What I'm gonna do now is, my gloved hand here, I'm gonna mix that. 
So again, I'm just, all I'm doing is just kind of working that seasoning through, mixing that turkey and chicken. And you create a good mix, make sure everything's nice and mixed. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're about to put in a pot and stir it around in a pot with those veggies. So we get this all kind of pumped up here. All right, now that that's mixed up, all right, I'm gonna make sure not to use my gloved hand to bring the camera. I'm gonna pour that in. There we go. Do we have that in there? Get that glove off. So basically what we're gonna do is, not really, I don't think it's called browning poultry, ground poultry, but I'm gonna stir this all together, make sure that we get kind of a base cook on here. What it's also gonna do is it's gonna draw all of the water out of it. Um, you know, what we're gonna do is uh, get to a certain point to where we can drain it because you don't want watery stuffed peppers. So I'm gonna put this in here and let it kind of cook for about five minutes, drain the water, let it cook for about another five minutes, and then we'll be ready to go. Now while the meat's cooking, I'm going to preheat the oven to 400 degrees and I'm going to prepare the topping for the stuffed peppers. Now, here's where it may get a little tricky. So, we have a million different types of diets. You may be on the ketogenic diet, which all, you know, up until now, it's we've been compliant with the ketogenic diet. Well, I'm not necessarily on the ketogenic diet. Uh, I like to add carbs to it. I'm not necessarily cutting down right now. I'm just, uh, you know, trying to add lean mass and stay relatively lean. So what I'm gonna use is seasoned breadcrumbs, but you can use uh, ground lupin, or you can use, uh, you know, some people like to use bacon bits, but um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some of these seasoned breadcrumbs in a bowl here. It's a staple of an Italian kitchen. I'm gonna add some paprika to it to add some color. You can see that how it added that nice red color. And I'm gonna put some salt. Now you can use any type of salt. I'm using Himalayan salt. And that's about all the seasoning we're gonna need because the, these breadcrumbs are seasoned already. Now if you wanna add spice, you can add spice to it. Maybe some cayenne pepper. That'll add that red color and I'll add a little kick to it. But I wouldn't use too much because it can get really hot. So now that I have the meat brown, now remember you don't have to worry about fully cooking it because it's about to go in a 400 degree oven for about 30 minutes. So what I'm gonna do is before I put stuff the bell peppers, I'm gonna take my salt, pepper, garlic mixture here. I'm just gonna lightly sprinkle the peppers. And what that does is it, you know, bell peppers have a distinct taste and they can you know overpower a, a dish so what you want to do is just kind of dilute that flavor a little bit and a mixture of salt pepper and garlic helps so what i'm gonna do is just kind of stuff each one don't worry about spillage because it's just gonna happen and for this i use a slotted spoon look when you cook ground turkey ground chicken it's gonna you know no matter how many times you drain it it's gonna have water so um, i like to drain it before putting it in the peppers. And as you can see, we're coming along here. Now, this is a little bit more messy, you know. I'm sorry if you if I have any of you out there that are really particular with mess. Uh, I can, in my kitchen, it can get kind of messy, so I'm just making sure to stuff these peppers for the sake of time here, right? Okay, so that's done. I'm gonna talk about the next step. So now that we have the meat stuffed in the peppers, I take my breadcrumb mixture here and I'm gonna 
liberally sprinkle it on, sprinkle it on top. And look, you could probably Google some ketogenic or paleo options for this recipe here, but these breadcrumbs work really well, especially when you put them in a 400 degree oven for 30 minutes. Well, what's going to happen is they're going to get toasted. It's going to be really good. So what I've done in the meantime is I had some leftover meat and I'm making sure to cook it fully. So I have it back on the stove and I'm going to prepare another dish with it because I don't want to waste the leftovers. So anyway, we have this here and what I'm going to do is put this in the oven. So we have the 400 degree oven here. Put this in there for 30 minutes. All right, y'all, so I used about two pounds of the meat and the peppers, and I had one pound left over, conveniently to make one of my favorite dishes, and that's kind of a lean, dirty rice. So what I have here is I have two cups of rice cooked. I'm gonna pour that in. I have onion powder, put some of that in there. I have garlic salt, so that'll take care of the garlic and the salt part of it. Put that in there. And two staples of a good dirty rice or a browning sauce. Um, I use kitchen bouquet browning sauce, a browning seasoning. And you don't have to use a lot of this, but this adds color and flavor, kind of a deep textured flavor to the dirty rice. Might have to add some more. And the other ingredient here is crystal hot sauce. Now you can use any type of Louisiana hot sauce, but my favorite here is crystal. I'm gonna put a good bit of that in there. And then what I'm gonna do now is stir it up. I'm gonna show you the finished product. So while our peppers are cooking and I'm stirring this rice, um, I wanna talk about, you know, since we're on the topic of rice, the difference between white rice and brown rice. Well, um, I used white long grain rice in here and it's uh, enriched. Uh, the difference between white rice and brown rice for uh, diet sake or for digestion sake is it takes longer to digest brown rice than it does uh, white rice. And, you know, basically, um, you know, the, the glycemic index, which, you know, I got to make a note to talk about that, but you can kind of Google the glycemic index. It's a, a measure of, you know, an hour after eating food, what it, its effect on your blood sugar levels or your blood glucose levels. And the glycemic index for white rice is higher because your body's going to convert it to um, sugar, the sugar that it needs for energy, faster than wood brown rice. So... Um, you know, again, it's your preference. It's, it's up to you as far as what your diet demands. All right. So our timer went off here and I'm going to get peppers out of the oven. This is an important step here to put your gloves on. You don't want to burn yourself, but as you can see, they're nice and toasted here. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take a bento box here, container, grab a pepper, put it in there, take a side here, take the little side we made here, about a half a cup of dirty rice, and we have ourselves a meal. Thanks for joining me on today's cooking lesson.